Welcome to episode 6 of the Nero Car Engine Project. Now, if you've watched the other uh, episodes, you'll notice that the puller's gone, all the ignition gubbins has gone, and the kickstart drive pinion has been put back on with this spring-loaded thing. And the reason that's been put up back on is because in this episode, I'm going to build a kickstart mechanism for it, because we're getting to the stage where we're going to put it all back together again and try and start the thing. So I need a kickstart. So the way it's going to work is that going to be a lot of cardboard aided design in this also known as CAD. This kickstart is going to be mounted around about here. There's going to be a pivot point, there's a little frame pivot point and when you basically push down on there this tooth quadrant will turn the flywheel. Um, and that's pretty much it. It'll be spring loaded such that it comes back down there and in its spring loaded position the teeth won't actually engage. It's only when you actually push it down they'll engage and spin it round. So that's pretty much how it's going to work in theory. I uh, obviously got to make this quadrant and I've got to cut gear teeth in there somehow using grinders and saws and drills and all sorts of stuff. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is build a small tower on here made out of these tubes with a pivot point at the same height as that because it makes the calculation simple. A pivot point about there. Uh, and two of these posts so that my kickstart can pivot. So that's the first thing, make this tower. So a bit of cutting and chopping later. We now have three bits of metal. That goes in there like that. These two go there like that. So sometime later, and after a lot of welding, well not that much welding, but some welding, these are all in and I've now got my pivot point for my kickstart, which is going to come out here. So I've done a bit of CAD, the cardboard, actually cornflakes packet, Weetabix is the best. If that goes in there, if you can imagine this has teeth on it, it's going to work something like this. So you push down on there, that rotates round and it... Uh, spins the the gear so you'd have to have some kind of pedal up here some i don't know whether it comes up a little little pedal on here so when you push on it you, you're still your foot still on it just down here but the first thing to do is to work out how to make this bit the right uh, radius and to cut some teeth into it so i'm going to do that in aluminium first as a prototype uh, why aluminium? Because aluminium is easy to work, easy to cut, it's like cheese compared to, to steel, easy to weld, so I can weld a boss on it. So I'll make the prototype out of aluminium, I think, and if that works, and it won't be perfect, but it'll hopefully it should sort of work, then I'll make it out of steel. So next step is to make a kickstart out of aluminium. So I've spent about an hour making this aluminium prototype. And the way it'll work is that you'll, you'll kick down, these teeth will spin round and rotate this pinion. Now, it never actually made it to a working prototype because I realised I actually got this pitch wrong. Mucked up a bit there, but um, it doesn't really matter. I've learned enough to have the confidence to make this thing out of steel. So I've got here a big 
dirty great big big sheet of um, or plate of six mil steel. So I'm going to cut the gear, cut the whole thing and the teeth out of that steel. So hopefully the next clip we should have uh, a working ish kickstart mechanism that we can at least sort of offer up and see if it actually rotates the teeth. So let's see how we get on. Well, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. So I've played this, cut this piece out of steel, which took a long time. And all of this is all rough cut. It, there's no point spending time making this look beautiful before I've cut these teeth, because if I mess this up, then this is all lost. So um, I, I measured and actually uh, ground down that radius pretty accurately and nicely. But then when I offer it up and I put a, a pen just inside there and rotate it round, I can see I need to take up off an, a, probably another millimeter, which represents the top of the teeth. If I, if I, um, so I've got to take that up first, and then I can mark out a bottom line, which is the bottom of the teeth, and then I can mark mark on the teeth. So next step is to basically trim and grind all that down, so I've got um, an accurate top line as my as my reference point. So. Well, I'll be doing that next. So after some considerable time and a lot of filing and fettling, I've made this, so I've hand, uh, I've, I've cut these, drilled, cut, and hand filed to match the mesh with that. Now, so I assemble it. I've explained a million times how this is going to work, so it shouldn't be any surprise whatsoever. Put that in there like that, and kick down and around the window, uh, around the window, around the the wheel. It spins, and this is on a little ratchet dog kind of clutch thing. And um, so what will happen is the kickstart will go up to basically there and stop and um, thing will spin over and hopefully, fingers crossed, it starts. So th um, that's good. I'm quite pleased with that. So there's a few more things to do before the kickstart's finished though. One is that I've got to make some bushes that are going to be welded on either side so that the pivot point is a bit wider and doesn't sort of wobble like that. That's the first thing. Second thing, I can sort of file and fettle all of this to make it all nice. The third thing is that it needs, the stop at the bottom is that, but it needs a stop about there. So I don't know whether I'm going to have something out here that it's going to, it's going to uh, hit effectively. It's got to be quite strong because you're smashing down on with your foot. So I've got to work out what's going to go where. Maybe an angle bracket is going to come out of here. Maybe another bit of box section welded onto there. I haven't decided yet. And the next thing is it's going to need some kind of pedal. So I'm going to use a bit of this tube. I'm going to cut sort of a section like this. It's going to have a curved bit and that's going to sort of go on there. About like that, I suppose, such that as you press down, as you press down, it effectively rolls with your foot. That's the plan anyway. I'll cut out a piece about that big and I'll offer it up. I'll have to cut that and weld it on. And what else? Oh yeah, it needs a return spring. Uh, now, I think the original had some kind of coil spring, a bit like you have on a brake pedal on a motorbike, but I, I don't have a coil spring. So I might have a tension spring that, that basically comes up here. I haven't decided yet. Um, Anyway, so that's it. Uh, well, it's not it. Um, so just need to do those things. And that's the kickstart done. And when the kickstart's done, we can think about the next chapter. Um, but I don't know what it is yet. But it'll, I'll tell you in a minute. So finish the kickstart. So we're pretty much there now with the kickstart. As I said before, I've put this piece on here. It's basically chopped a piece out of this three inch tube and shaped the, this lever arm and welded it on. And the idea is that your foot starts off at this, this angle relative to the lever but ends up at that angle relative to the lever because it swings down. So if this kickstart comes down, 
goes down. So as you saw, it stopped moving because I've got a, a stop plate just here. And I've also welded in a brass, uh, not brass, a steel bearing, a bush on the side of the lever arm. So the whole thing is, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't wobble from side to side. At the moment, I've just got a spacer in just there because um, as you see, it has, still hasn't got a return spring. I still need to talk the return spring out. And I'm going to try and get a, a coil return spring off a modern motorbike and try and make that work in there. But for now, I think um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so in terms of what's next, I've still got the exhaust, the carb, and the exhaust, carb, oh, and fuel tank to sort out. Uh, but I can't really sort those out until it's all back together again. So I think the next chapter is going to be all about cleaning all these parts up and, and screwing the whole thing back together. So I'm ready to do the final bits before starting it. So that's all for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like my um, beautiful hand-cut gear. There you go, another demo. And um, yeah, tune in next time for the exciting rebuild episode, which will be episode 7.